In this video, I'm going to show you how to edit videos on the desktop app for your Insta360 X3 camera. Okay, so we're going to jump over to my computer now and I'm going to do a screen share walkthrough of how to do this. So, I am over on my computer. I have the Insta360 Studio open and if you haven't already downloaded that, that's the first thing you're going to need to do. I will put a link in the description of where you can go and do that. I have literally just uploaded the video we're going to work on in this video and it's just a 360 video that is from my Insta360 uh, X3 camera and I've just basically double clicked on it and it's opened it in the uh, studio editor and as you can see we have complete control of where we want the camera to look this is just basically me on a chairlift in Italy <coughs> excuse me so I'm just going to delete all the keyframes I had here so we can give you a bit of a walk through what's going on. So this is the dashboard of what it will look like when you first open a video. And as you can see, we have a timeline down at the bottom. We have all sorts of different tools here and we can zoom in on the timeline, we can zoom out and we have some cool tools on the side here which we'll get into in a second. <clears throat> now, obviously we've got the play button, you can move this play header around, and let's say for instance you want to trim your video or you only want to use a certain segment of the, the video you shot, you can, you can mark the trim start point and you can also mark the trim end point so we can only edit a certain portion of the video which is really good because then we can only focus on the portion of the video we want and we don't have to export the whole video, which could be a big file. So I'm just gonna get rid of those trim clips for now. Um, what else can we do? So obviously we can use the mouse and we can move where we want things to look. We can hold command on a Mac and we can rotate things like this. We can hold the option key, we can move up and down. We can do all sorts with this. Now. Let's say, for instance, we find our, okay, here we go. So let's put a trim point here. And we're just gonna edit a 10 second clip just for the demonstration. So we're gonna put a keyframe here at the start. And you'll notice here, you can adjust all sorts of different aspect ratios and different angles. We can have the natural view, which will kind of take the, the, the spherical thing off the camera. So it'll look a lot more natural as you can see. Or we can go crystal ball, which is kind of a cool thing. Tiny planet. Let's just go and keep this default for now. Okay, we've got a keyframe. Now what we can do is we can decide if we want to have another keyframe somewhere else. Rotate the camera right around, and let's have another keyframe here. And what this will do is, the the app will actually move between these two keyframes. And I'll give you a demonstration. Actually, it'll be easy to show you. Let's move from one keyframe install that keyframe. Add another keyframe. Move that round here. Let's see how we go again now. You can see the camera moving now. There we go. Look. So we can move the camera around like this, and we can play around with all sorts of different ways the camera transitions between the two keyframes. So we can have a fade in and fade out, which can give you a lot of a smoother transition, a lot more natural looking. But you may not want that. You may want it to be. A slip in, slip out, what's that? So look at that. So it almost pauses in the middle and then whips around to the second keyframe, which is pretty cool. So that's one of the key features in this, in the app. And obviously you can play around with as many different keyframes as you want. It's really, really customizable. Another cool thing I like about the app is this tool here called Deep Track, which is um, an AI tool which you can really automate the whole process here. So we can draw a square or a box around what we want the app to track and 
the AI tool or the tracking will do this automatically for us. So we click start tracking and it, look at that, it's actually tracking my shape sat on that chairlift. Now, I'm going to let this go for a second and click stop tracking. Now if we watch this back and you'll see what's happened here. Now you can see there the actual app is making sure that I'm always in the center of the frame wherever I am. So this could be really useful for you if you want to track a certain subject or a certain you know, object or building or something like that in your 360 footage. We also have time shift as well, which is this lightning bolt here. So what we can do is we can time shift and stretch this out and let's see what happens now. So it's speeding up the footage and we can go even faster. We can go up to go eight times as fast. So you may want to add certain speed aspects in your footage if you are transitioning between things or you want to just have a bit of a play around with things. Now, what have we got here? Motion blur, so we can add motion blur to this as well. And it says here, look, motion blur is on for two times speed and above the effect will be applied after exporting. So you won't be able to see the motion blur right now here. You'll only be able to see the motion blur once the video has been exported. So just keep that in mind. Now what we can also do here as well, depending on if you're making a video for YouTube, which say we are now, this is in 16 by nine aspect ratio, but let's say for instance, we want to quickly transition this to a nine by 16 post for say Instagram or social media. We can do that really, really easily. So look, we can go back to what we've already edited. You may want to delete all these keyframes, but you can then go through exact, the exact same process again. And um, you can make sure that your subject is in the center of the frame, but this time for a nine by 16 aspect ratio for TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube shots, which is a really, really cool feature, really easy to use. So we'll go back to the nine by 16, 16 by nine for now. And we'll look at these tools down the side here on the right hand side. So we have a number of different options we can play around with. So obviously flow state stabilization is the stabilization that's built into the camera. I would probably always keep that on, but you may want to turn it off to play around with it, but I would always keep it on. Direction lock. So this will always make sure the camera lock picks direction. You see that it's not doing any movement whatsoever or anything like that. We turn it off, it'll obviously rotate around with the, the gyroscope of the camera. Stitching, so stitching, if you are <coughs> unfamiliar, stitching is how the camera puts the two images of the two cameras together. So obviously you imagine two cameras on your X3 camera, there's still a bit of a gap between those two cameras. So what, the, what this app will do, and the AI and the tool and the software, will stitch all that together. And you can kind of you can kind of play around with this stitching line, tell it if you're above or under water, and it will obviously give you some better options for the video you're trying to create. Uh, we've got dynamic stitching. I'm actually too sure what dynamic stitching is, it's new to me. I've just kind of left this as it comes out of the camera, and I've not really had any problems. But you may want to have a play around with that. Uh, media processing, we obviously have a couple of different color options here. So it's got color plus, which you can see there if we turn it on, it changes the color slightly and it enhances it, but you may not like that. I'll turn it off. We turn clarity plus on, obviously increase the clarity. Aquavision, I'm suspecting that is for when you're underwater and it changes the color of how that looks. And then we have true audio. So I've got this currently turned off, but you may want to have your audio so it is more voice focused. So if you're doing a lot of talking or you want to get rid of say wind reduction, noise reduction here could be worth turning on and having experiment with. <coughs> we also have the option here to remove the logo so you can have the Insta 360 logo on here if you want. I don't really know why you would. I always have this turned off. <coughs> Project management, obviously you can create all sorts of new projects in here just to keep organized and on top of all your footage. And then we obviously have the file properties of this clip. Now, 
can also be in 36, that's new to me. Okay, we're in reframe mode again. Now, once you are happy with your clip, you can export it and save it to your computer. So this is this button here, we have the export button. And we can decide what we want to export our video as and different options with that. I usually go for around between a 30 and 50 megabyte bitrate, just because I feel it's a bit of a high quality. Resolution, obviously you have 1920 by 1080 here. You could also increase that to like a 4K file size if you wanted to. I usually just keep that the same for what I use. Encoding format, depending on what you want to do with the video. If you just literally want the 360 clip you've created, I would personally just keep it at H.264. But if you want to do some further customization on it and you are you know, going to add this into Premiere Pro or Final Cut, I probably would go with a ProRes 422 file. It's obviously going to be a lot of a bigger file if you go with that, but depends what you want to do with the video. And you can click Start Export. <clears throat> the system will do its thing and there's actually a percentage bar here so you can see the progress of the export. This will obviously get to completed and then you'll be able to go to your export history and you'll be able to see your video file in here which you can obviously then add straight into wherever you want to do it. You can share it, you can add it to your editing software, do, do more things from there with it. So I hope this video was useful for you. It was kind of a bit of an overview of how the Insta360 editing software works. Obviously, this is just a desktop video. I'm gonna make another video of how to edit videos on your X3 camera using the mobile app. I think that'll be useful to a lot of people. And if this video did help you out, consider giving it a like, it helps to show it to more people. And there will be a link in the description if you wanna go and grab yourself an X3 camera. And if you go through my special link, Insta360 have given the viewers and subscribers of this channel, a, an option to get a free gift with the camera of your choice. So it could be a selfie stick or something else. But I hope you enjoy this video. Take care and we'll see you in the next one.